Hello, I'm Rob Rue with Littleton and Rue Funeral Home. On behalf of the family, I want to thank you for showing your support online today. We understand that these are very difficult times, and we want family and friends to witness this celebration of life within their individual comfort zones. This live stream will remain available on our Facebook page and can be freely shared with anyone. Thank you for showing support and feel free to make comments below to the family. You may also visit littletonandrue.com to leave expressions of sympathy and view the memorial video. Remember, your presence is important, whether it's here at the service or online. Thank you for showing compassion to the family today. Good afternoon. I am uh, Mark Payne, the pastor from uh, Asbury United Methodist Church, where uh, Carolyn and Vernon have been uh, active for many years. Uh, before we go get into the service, sorry, I just want to mention that uh, at some point in the service, I will ask if there's anybody who has a, a memory that they might want to share, and would ask if you would come up here to do it so everybody could hear. I already have one that has been written down for me that I will read later on, but uh, if there are, you just want to put that in your head, that if maybe you have something you think is important to share with others, that you might do that. You might have a story that nobody else knows. Dying, Christ destroyed our death, and rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Carolyn put on Christ, so now in Christ, may she be clothed in glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when Jesus appears, we will be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I have hold the keys of hell and death. Because I should live, you shall live also. We have gathered here to celebrate life. Even in the midst of tears, even in the midst of sorrow and loss, it is still an opportunity to celebrate life. Especially for somebody who uh, had as many good years as Carolyn did. It is an opportunity to share in that celebration. So we come together acknowledging that indeed there is grief, indeed there is loss, but we do give thanks for her life. May God grant us grace that in pain we might find comfort, in sorrow hope, and in death resurrection. Would you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the great company of all of those who have finished their course in life and in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those who are dear to us, whom we remember even now. But especially this day, we give thanks for Carolyn's life, whom you now have graciously received into your presence. For all of them, God, we, we ask that you would grant your peace. Let your light shine upon them and help us to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to read a, uh, actually recite a psalm and uh, invite you. I know a lot of folks know this by heart. If you would want to uh, say it along with me or just kind of whisper under your breath, however you might do it. Uh, I'm going to mention a couple of things about it afterwards. 
23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Truly goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Sometimes when there are familiar words that uh, we can just kind of recite from memory, we don't always stop and think about what it is that we're saying. There is a line in there that I lift up any opportunity I have because I think it's an important one for us to remember. We we gloss over it sometimes, and sometimes we, we think of it as a... As a, a negative kind of line, but it's not. It's actually a very uplifting line that's in there. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's not a place where we stay and dwell. It's not a place where we live. It's a place that we move through on the way to something else. And it mentions also then that God is there to guide us and help us get through that time. So we walk through that valley on into eternal life. We don't know what that looks like. We don't know exactly what's there for us, but there is a promise of something that is uh, much better than what we have to deal with right now in the brokenness of our world. There's a lot of good, but there is a lot of pain as well. There are some verses from Isaiah 40 that I also like to use at this time that um, it's really words for us who are still here says, have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary, and his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Those are words that um, I like to remember going through difficult times because it's a promise that God is never far away from us, never leaves us. And as we turn to God and look for help, look for strength, God is more than willing to grant that. There are many things that God is willing to grant also, but we'll, we'll talk about some of that a little bit later. But this time I wanted to just take a time to remember Carolyn at this time. So Carolyn was 82 years old. She was born in Clinton County, Ohio on April 8th, 1938. The daughter of Homer Elroy and Helena Lois Wright. She graduated from Springfield High School in the Ohio State University. And we've already had conversations about that. I try not to hold that against anybody. <laughs> We talked about, I'm a, I'm a Michigan, per, Michigan State, I'm just sure that's clear, Michigan State person. But I always have, uh, uh, it's a great place in my heart for folks from Ohio, in Ohio State. She worked at Town and Country for 25 years as coordinator of evaluations, adult assessment, community placement for, before her retirement. She was a member of Asbury United Methodist Church, the Ladies of Asbury, Starlight Garden Club, which was one of the first gardening clubs in the area that met at night for working women. Pioneering. Survived by her husband of 42 years, Vernon, children and their in-laws, you have James and Christy, Stephen, Marjorie, Debbie, Marie and Don, Della, Dennis, Julie and Aaron. 11 grandchildren, four great-granddaughters, and a sister-in-law, Marie Ann Wright. Preceded in death by, her th by three brothers, David, Bill, and Carl, along with one sister, Patricia. This is a time where I'm going to invite you to consider the possibility of sharing some stories. So I'm going to read some, uh, some words that uh, Lisa, granddaughter, uh, wrote down 
for me to share with you today. She said this, Grandma Carolyn was my grandma by choice. More than 40 years ago, she chose my grandpa, and I am so very grateful that she did. Together they made one family where there once was two. Without her, we would not have known the love and care of a grandmother that she instilled in all 11 of us. She loved each of her grandchildren equally, equally and unreservedly. There was never any difference between those who were hers by blood and those who were hers by love. Never once did she make me feel somehow less than. She embraced each of our unique talents and successes and created a home where we all felt welcome and safe. My life is better because she loved us, and I hope she now can see just how much we loved her. Thank you for sharing this with us. Are there others that might want to share some kind of a memory that they I'm going to cry all the way through this. If I had one word to describe my mom with, it'd be nice. Nice person ever. My first memory of my mom was when my sister was born. My dad took me to the hospital and pointed to the window and told me that that was my mom holding my, my sister. My mom's two greatest loves in her life were faith and family. My mom did everything she could for her family. I know that's what moms do, but she was exceptional. She would sew for the family. PJs, curtains, something called a ditty bag. <laughs> what is a ditty bag? I'm not sure, but it was something for us to put our toys in on long car rides. Possibly made from the same material as my pajamas or my curtains. Thank you, Mom. My mom loved to garden, and we often had fresh produce that she had grown. Thanks for making me eat my vegetables. She had a great love of history, especially Civil War history. And maybe it was her love of history, as well as her love of family, that compelled my mom to constantly be taking pictures of all of us. Thank you, Mom. In 1978, my mom married the love of her life, Vernon Baker, and her family grew from three kids to six, which I'll refer to as the Brady Bunch. Whoops. Baker Bunch. <laughs> um, I remember growing up, my mom's mom pointing to all the photographs on her console TV. You remember those, a big giant piece of furniture? She had lots of kids and grandkids, and she would tell me how many grandchildren and great-grandchildren she had. It was an impressive amount of family. Little did I know that my mom would get to enjoy the Baker Bunch, which grew to include 11 grandchildren, as you said, and eventually four great-grandchildren. My mom was always attending every event that she could get to that her 11 grandchildren were involved in. And I can't tell you how many times my parents made the trip to Virginia to visit my family. My mom's illness caused many changes in her, but the thing I was profoundly impressed by was her ability to appreciate the little things in life, the things I forget to appreciate and take for granted. She loved to sit outside. And at Woody Glen, she could sit outside and watch the people and I'll never forget her telling me how pretty the blue sky was as we sat on a bench in the courtyard. She always had a smile for me and would give a queen-like wave and beam a big old smile when she saw her husband, Vernon, coming to sit with her during lunches and dinners. Vernon's devotion to my mom was absolutely amazing. I can only hope I can honor my mother's memory by being half as nice as she was. And from now on, when I disagree with someone's opinion, I'm going to say, oh, piffle. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, James. Does anybody else have uh, any thoughts, memories that they would like to share? I know a lot of folks don't like to get up. I know many of you have stories and things that you would, but don't like to come up here, and that's fine. 
what I would encourage you to do is I know you're going to have a time afterwards of uh, sharing around a meal. And uh, what I would invite you to do is to share those stories around those tables. Move around the tables as much as you, you can and, and share those stories with each other. Because invariably somebody has a story they've never heard about Carolyn. And uh, the picture of her becomes more complete as we hear those stories and hear what it is that she said and did with others. Share stories. It's how people live on. Share stories. So as you heard already from both Lisa and James, there are many dimensions to this woman. Photographer, gardener, sewer, <laughs> uh, collector of bears, yoga practitioner. Apparently she did that for quite a while. Her work with the uh, mentally disabled, her kids, where she uh, gave them lots of dignity and respect in a world that doesn't always do that. And apparently many folks have talked about what an incredible person she was to work for. So some other words that have been used to describe her, sweet, kind, giving, genuine. I told you I was going to include these. The five F words that Stephen shared <laughs> the other day. Family, friends, flowers, photos, and faith. But the other thing that uh, you've already heard also a little bit about is this is a woman with uh, profound faith, and she was uh, involved at the church. You've already heard about her, some of her involvement with the, the ladies at the, in the church. She do a lot of different ministry. And she was also involved in teaching. One of her favorite uh, stories is that of the mustard seed. And as a it, that was mentioned, and then one of the phrases, the last phrases she said, or the one thing that she liked to share with her children was, Mommy loves you, have faith. She was planting those seeds, planting those mustard seeds. That was, whether it was intentional or not, it was what she was doing. And I have a feeling it probably was intentional. Planting seeds of faith that they might live on well beyond her. Her favorite verse, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. God's love is so great for us. And that was what she embraced and what she tried to pass along. For this day, though, there are some words from uh, the Gospel of John and some other words in the Gospel of John that I would share these are words from the 14th chapter. And I have both Carolyn and us in mind as I, as I read these words. Because I think they are important for us to hear for ourselves, but important also for us to hear about what it means for her. Jesus said to his friends before he was taken from them, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. So this thing is kind of couched in these words of don't let your heart be troubled and don't be afraid. Quite often when we face uh, our mortality, and especially as we sit in a service like this and we're talking about somebody who has just recently passed, there is fear sometimes that comes into our hearts and our minds. And we do feel troubled. And Jesus is trying to remind us that there's nothing to be troubled about here. Death 
and moving on to eternal life is as much a part of the natural order of things as every breath that we take. So there is this promise of something that's beyond here. We don't know exactly what it is. But it is a place where healing and wholeness reigns supreme. And so we trust in that. Especially for somebody uh, that dealt with some medical issues and some, some issues of, um, well, memory in the last years. The promise of wholeness and healing that takes place after death is an important thing for us to hear. Years and years ago, there was somebody else that talked about death being actually the ultimate healing. Too often, human beings think of death as the ultimate failure, but it is not. It actually is the ultimate healing. It's not the end, it's a transition. And I think that she knew that well. It's part of the faith that she tried to pass along. I think it was Debbie that mentioned um, one of the hymns that she loved, uh, When We All Get to Heaven. So I just want to read a couple of verses and chorus uh, to you because I think these kind of inform her, what her faith was like and what it is that we might think about and ponder ourselves. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon is beauty we'll behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. So there is that word in that chorus that I think is an important thing to really consider about what death really is and the transition to something else, and that is victory. Not failure, but victory. That there is the promise of something even greater beyond this. Now the thing is, is that she tried to instill that into the people around her. And there were many qualities of her life that we've already mentioned. The type of person that she was, kind and caring and genuine and giving. Now here's something that I would invite you to. This basically, it's taking what James said and taking it a little bit even further. And that is that whatever that you saw, whatever you saw in her that was the best thing about her, the greatest way that you could honor her is to live it out. The greatest way that you can honor somebody is to try your best to live that which they tried to pass along to you. Pass it on. Pass it on to other people. Live it loudly wherever you go. Carolyn never dies. She lives on with you and in the ways that you pass her along to others. So in a way, that whole mustard seed thing becomes even greater because that one seed that she planted with you can grow and grow in the people around you and everybody else that she touched. Would you pray with me? God, your love never ends and it never fails. And so as we come to this time where there is a, a void that has been left, we give you thanks. And so we lift each other up this day. For those of us who struggle with doubts, we pray that your light will shine on us. To those who are feeling weak, we pray for your strength. For all who have turned away from you, we pray again for your mercy. And for all who grieve and sorrow this day, we pray for your peace. Lord, help us to love one another the way that you love us. We trust you, God, with the, the care, the 
Carolyn and for all others that have passed. First you gave her to us and now we trust her back in your arms. God of love, we thank you for all with which you have blessed us even to this day. For the gift of joy and days of health and strength and for your gift of abiding presence and promise in days of pain and grief. We give you thanks for our home, for family, for friends, for our place in your family. But above all, we thank you for Jesus, for through him we know what you are really like. And he knows what we are really like. He knows our griefs, died our death, and rose again for our sake, and lives and prays with and for us, even as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm not going to give a dismissal because I know that most of you probably are going to be together and we will uh, see each other in just a little bit out at the graveside for some final words. Everyone at this time will begin dismissing you from the back of the room forward. I'd like to give you that opportunity to visit with the family and pass by the casket and make your way to your cars for the procession to the cemetery. Those of you that will be serving as pallbearers today, I would just ask that you wait in the hallway by the front door for further instruction. We'll begin in the back row, please.